Disclaimer. The following video is part of a playthrough that contains these heavy topics. Viewing it is at your own risk, and with this, your discretion is advised. Might as wash over the sea of posts about VTubers. Many of them are self-promotions by VTubers themselves. On upcoming streams and others are just memes about what might have happened in a stream this week. <coughs> Milk. Don't question the milk. Don't question from where the milk comes from. Don't question what the milk is made from. It's milk. That's all you that's all you get to know. Or else I've been letting my mood show over text. Just a stupid mistake. Now I've got Makoto worrying about someone like me. Oh sorry, uh, <laughs> nothing happened. I guess this is just this just shows how little I text. How dumb of me. I got you shouldn't relate to watch me, please. There's no response back. A gentle breeze traces my face as I make my way through the familiar path to my college campus. I lift my shoulders to re readjust my bike, carrying the weight of manga volumes. Carrying a bag with books to a classroom on campus. It's almost like I'm back a couple of months to when classes were are active. I'm not used to seeing the campus so peaceful. Usually I would see people swarming this area to get to their next class or get back home. I can appreciate this calm, quiet ambience. I pause at the side of a vending machine off to the side of a walkway. I guess I could get a coffee for Makoto. Maybe... Dell brings some life to her eyes. <laughs> I arrive at the door to the room that Makoto specified. I don't hear anything inside. Not that I expected to hear anything. Makoto is probably just staring out the window, thinking to herself. I side open the door and scan the contents of the room. In the center of the room is that familiar figure of Makoto. She's sitting at the desk and has her head resting on her arms. Her eyes are closed and her body slowly moves to the rhythm of her breasts. She's sleeping? Yes, I'm a bit too I'm a bit early. But I wouldn't expect her to just fall asleep in the classroom before she's about to meet someone. She also doesn't seem like the type of person to want anybody to catch her sleeping. Ah. Actually, no one else. No one wants to am but <coughs> I rephrase my, I say, I phrase myself from my video, did, or well, actually not a video, it's more like from a chat that I post, that I sent in the streamer's chat, and basically it's now embodied in a clip. Watching somebody sleep is a fetish. If a streamer wants to go to sleep, then his viewers can watch him and fulfill his fetishes. Twitch TOS simplified. Is sleeping a fetish? Is watching- is that a fetish? Are people watching me sleep a fetish? How is that a fetish? I trolled them bad, oh my gosh, what the fuck, prob? Why? Oh, that's what that was. Everything is a fetish, Jesus Christ. And I have forgotten the word for it, but there is a word for it. For it watching people sleep actually actually it's watching people being unconscious but uh, it's kind of the same because if you're sleeping you're unconscious okay i'm getting into weird territory there <laughs> but um yeah everything is a fetish doesn't matter what everything is a fetish the juice you drink well drinking juice is a, is a fetish Playing a video game is also a fetish, <laughs> which, um, if, if you have this fetish, then uh, hey. Please don't type in the chat that you that you just want to ahem yourself. With ahem yourself, I mean like... <clears throat> I'm getting into weird territory. <laughs> ahem. Anyway. I close the door behind me and make my way over to Makoto, debating on whether I should wake her up. Oh, 
Okay, it's cute. It's cute. It's weird, but it's cute. The weird thing, though, is exactly what I just said. <laughs> the outline of her face makes itself clear as I walk along the side of the classroom. There was a calm innocence that's a stark contrast from her usual deadpan, cynical, but playful demeanor. But there was also a faint sadness to it, an almost wistful longing. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. As I walk across the classroom through the desks, reflections of light start to reel themselves near Makoto's eyes. I notice the tear stains that create a tray from each of her eyes. Is she crying? I freeze in place, unable to fully process the scene. Understandable. Feelings of sorrow and uncertainty wash over me as I collect my thoughts. Also, why the fish are our visual novels always so. <clears throat> I don't want to continue the sense because at the same time, my brain just noticed oh, yeah, because visual novel. Novel. In novels, every character that has. that feels or thinks of stuff is written down. So it's understandable to get into the character. Which is also weird to say that basically every game is technically an RPG. <clears throat> I will not go into further details of why I think that. I'm unable to take any action other than the to watch the faint glimmer of light from the teardrops at the corners of her eye. Seeing her like this, she looks so vulnerable and fragile, like she just could just collapse at any moment. Maybe that's why I'm afraid to reach for her, because she could give away at the slightest touch. Is she dreaming about something? Or did something happen recently? What can I do for her? I really am pathetic. Makoto is in front of me, potentially going through some harsh circumstances, and here I am, having su such selfish thoughts. I felt like I should do something for her, but my immediate motivation wasn't because of her. It was for my own self-satisfaction, of feeling like I had worth by being someone useful. It's so disgusting, these conceit, self-indulged, indulgent thoughts. As is, in response to my thoughts, Makoto's arms slowly start shifting to indicate that she's woken up. Her eyes clench for a brief moment, and then slowly open. She slowly rises as she brings the back of her hand to her eyes, immediately noticing moisture moisture of the tears as she makes contact. Her calm sadness quickly transforms into panic as she turns her head and immediately notices my presence. <laughs> Yo, what you doing here? <laughs> why did you... Why do you watch me sleep and cry? It's hard to tell exactly what is behind her expression. Is it desperation or maybe in fear? Makoto quickly turns her head and wipes her face on her sleeves. She then turns her head back to me. If you apologize right now, then it's not too late for forgiveness. A remark that takes me off guard. Because of her sudden shift in demeanor. I, uh, sorry. Normally I would have taken a jab back, but I'm still sensitive to the scene I had just witnessed. Hmm. Are you worried about me? The last time I heard this from a girl and with something said. You know what happened? Nothing good. So, yeah, please don't. I mean, okay, the last time there was also a third party influence in there, so that is also there, but um. Yeah. Don't be there. Don't be. That was nothing. I was just having an emotional dream. Yeah, I don't think so really, my god. I dreamed that I lost the gacha for my favorite character and it was the last bet. It was terrible. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, uh-huh, definitely. It was definitely your favorite catcher character on her last banner. I can bring myself to smile at her joke. 
Maybe it's better if I did. Maybe it's better if I just pretend that she was telling the truth and it was all, all really nothing significant. But I can't bring myself to do that. Hey, I try to find the right words to say. But what can I even say? Nothing I can say will be short of conceit and self-righteous. After all, am I even doing this for her? Hmm? Please, don't worry about me. Stop! I really am fine. Stop! No, oh, please. Don't give me that face. Stop! 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 We don't want Sayori back in here! Do we? Do we? Do we? Do, do we want to say you're back here? No. What about your own expression? All I'm doing is making her feel worse. I really don't know what to do, but I don't want to see her plead like this. Sorry. I look away to hide my expression, not knowing if that's even preferable to looking at her. Trying to think of a way to clear the awkwardness, I remember that I bought coffee for Makoto on the way. I open my bag and hand her the can of coffee. Here, I brought, I bought this since I figured you would be tired. I'm always tired, but maybe tired is just comparative. If that's my default state of being, then I'm a really tired. Yes, by all reasonable interpretations, I would still consider you to be tired. Makuro just gives me a slight smile as she grasps the can and pulls the tab to crack open the lid. Ah, crack open a, a cold one with the boy. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the coffee's probably cold, so <laughs> that's good. So that joke makes sense. <clears throat> he suddenly starts sipping, looking off to the side of the classroom. Oh yeah, there, here's the postcard you wanted. Makadu hands me the signed postcard I've been incessantly searching for online for the past few months. The penmanship is a, a bit messy and indicated that this postcard was hand signed. Um, I don't know. I, I set those, all those channel points up a long time ago. So... Uh, can't really tell. So, yeah. It's still in mint condition, with the plastic wrap remaining undisturbed. Wait, the condition is flawless! How do you even ha have this? I told you, I'm a big fan. Is there a big fan of mana so critical of her? Maybe I should do that as well. Well, maybe she'd prefer it that way. I have a hard time believing that. I open my bag to carefully place the postcard in my bag in a position that it would not possibly get damaged. I pull out the manga volumes that I had stored in my bag and hand the small stack to Makoto. Here, Heroes of the Sky, most recent volumes. Oh yeah, thanks. It seems like we are mostly back to talking like normal. Or still a lingering awkwardness in the air. It's probably best not to think about it. Makoto starts flipping through the pages of the earliest volume given to her and drags her eyes across the pages. Ah, oh, thank you, Sib. And yes, I should make it cheaper, probably. Did the music just restart? And oh, hmm, I don't know what to say right now. I walk over to the window and look out at the campus. Beautiful green canopy along the sides of the modern buildings. As a calm beauty to the grounds, when students are crowding every path, I can hear Makoto occasionally giving a hmm or interesting in between the sounds of pages being flipped. Say, who's your favorite character? Huh? I turn my head to Makoto, still scanning through the pages of the volume in her hands. Well, if I had to say, it would be the antagonist, Argent. I really respect how he's able to stand true to his convictions through all of his hardships. 
He has the power to make them a reality and isn't afraid to take the necessary steps forward. He doesn't rely on anybody else and pushes forward with his own strength. You know he's going to lose in the end, right? Such is the cruelty of fate. He tries his best not to hurt the innocent, but his methods are misguided. That's usually the type of character that loses but has some sort of redemption and turns around to be an ally against some greater evil. Oh, Shadow. Did you just spoil the ending for me? The story isn't even over yet and I'm just talking about theoreticals. Makuro lets go of the book to let out a big laugh. What about you? Who's your favorite? Princess Claudia. She was forced to suddenly bear the weight of her entire kingdom at a young age. She was able to take such a responsibility and not collapse under the weight of the expectations of hundreds of thousands of people. Oh. Although she says she wasn't ready for it, she managed to preserve and steer the kingdom in the right direction. How strong do you have to be to be able to do that? You have a point. She was even younger than us when she was tasked with leading her kingdom. I think the amazing part was that she was able to do so without being sure of herself. She adopted every decision she made but managed to stay strong. If it was someone else who was a hundred percent sure of their decisions then I don't think they would experience as much turmoil. Well, you never know. I'm sure confident people would have their own issues they would face. Eh. Not that I would know. You seem pretty confident about VTubers. I don't face any uncertainty there. They are a fact of life. There's plenty of uncertainty. VTubers as a concept is fairly new and we have no idea what their future holds. Well, because we are actually right now in the year 2030. Um, as somebody from 20 or 2021, actually, I don't know, but um, yeah, as someone from 2023, it is still weird. <laughs> and the trajectory of being a content creator is never predictable. Um, <clears throat> yep, also, you'd never know who might be part of the next big drama or controversy, yeah, yeah, especially if you were the bird side. You see it all the time. Someone has hard copyright complications. Someone else accidentally reveals a chat log or gets a message that indicates something controversial. Or very recently, okay, actually, with the beginning of the year, you play a game that is based that is based on an IP of someone who is very, very transphobic. Yeah. Another shows one part of their real life self and everybody goes crazy. Hmm. I guess in that sense that's true. Beatable seem to face a lot of the same problems that other public figures do. Yeah. With some of their own unique problems. Yeah. The, 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 the bonus thing that is either positive, positive or negative is that well um don't know who who they how they are actually outside yeah hmm. in a way the immunity that protects them can also work against them you see that as i just said the immunity because you don't know who they are in the back who this the person is in behind the VTuber. I have no clue. This could be a good thing, but also a bad thing. So, I assume you mean how people want to know about their personal lives because it's almost like it's forbidden knowledge. Yeah, VTubers try their best to hide their personal life, but that just makes people want to find out more. Honestly, I can say I haven't had those feelings come to me naturally before. I know it's wrong to try and pursue that knowledge, but it's just such a natural feeling. And 
I have to say here name but I mostly keep it myself like if for example I find a VTuber then suddenly I hear their voice in some place else or even before that I just go oh is this really so oh that's really so okay nice just on with my life just going just continue my life with just this little knowledge and then just do nothing with it nothing like what I, I learned, for example, something very too personal about a few VTubers. Accidentally. And I was just like, okay. Yeah, I know this. And what can I do with it now? What can I do with this knowledge? That's right. Nothing. Because, well, I could do bad stuff. I could do bad stuff. But I don't. Because... Yeah, it's just, it's just no. It's a nice to know and just go on with my life. Because I personally have no reason to use that information. And I hope if any personal stuff from me comes out, I hope you all don't do anything with it too. You just have it as a little nice to know and move on. Okay? If you watch a video who has all these great qualities, you just want to know who they actually are. Who they actually are, eh? You like to ask that a lot, don't you? Hmm, like you are somehow a VTuber, maybe. <clears throat> oh yeah, I guess that's sort of what we talked about when we first met. Whether that's the VTuber's real self or not. Because it's... Regardless of real or not, I don't think we would necessarily be any better off by knowing what the VTuber is like outside of streaming. All you would likely end up is doing is say setation, that saturating our curiosity. I have no idea how to pronounce this word. And if I said it wrong, then sorry. And it would be at the expense of the VTuber's privacy and feelings. Maybe that's not the side of themselves that they want to show to the public. And even if they act pretty much the same in person, I don't think anybody would want their personal information leaked. They would have to live in constant fear and anxiety that they might become the source of unwanted attention. I would imagine VTubers already have some anxiety about that. Just from having their voice identified in public. Eh, kind of. Yeah, I would imagine a lot of VTubers talk on stream like they normally would. Hey. But you'd be surprised at how many of them are good at changing their voice and they, the way they speak. Could you teach me that, please? <laughs> nah, nah, I don't think. But yeah, I when I when I talk no more. <sighs> this is for example a thing. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is as normal as Roman can be. That's true. A lot of them have voice acting skills. Mana's voice acting especially is nice. Hey, I'm also kind of a voice actor. I mean, not really. I mean, a little bit, but. Um, that is just how the cookie crumbles. Okay, I should probably stop right now. <coughs> oh, you think so? You don't? I think it's okay. Hush as ever. Of course, if compared to a professional, it won't be as good. But for a typical person, it's amazing. It just shows how much hard work she's put into it. I find it really weird that you call yourself a big fan, but you're also so critical of her. Do you secretly secretly hate her or something? Of course not. She's brought me opportunities to connect to others in a way that brings me so much joy, despite how terrible the world can be. Wow. 
The identity of Mana is who I wish to be. Ha! Huh? Someone who's always beautiful, happy and kind that can overcome any hardship while also bringing joy to others. I didn't think she'd suddenly say something positive about Smana. Someone who's beautiful, happy and kind, huh? Are you sure she's referring to her inner beauty? Guess I don't know her too well to say, but I don't think she's necessarily ugly inside. I mean, actually, really, it's not about. I have never heard this, the phrase, you are really, you are really ugly inside. Like, there's beauty in, in somebody. They're in the beauty, but they're in the, in the ugliness, that, that doesn't exist. That is just something. You can be, have the inner beauty, but if you don't, then you're just in the normal. Well, not that she's lacking in physical body beauty either, minus her eyes. What do you mean by that? I guess Makoto isn't exactly a happy person, but it's hard to, to tell because most of the time she seems to choke around a lot. And if she is sad, then she doesn't say it. And kind? I mean, she messes with me a lot and has some strong opinions, but I can tell she has a good heart. I don't think you're exactly lacking in those values. Oh, so you think I'm beautiful? Alright, I regret saying anything. Obviously, you weren't talk taking, talking just about physical beauty. Sorry, sorry. Thank you, really, for saying so. But I can't look at myself that way. That's all I say. Makro lifts back up the manga and starts reading where she left off. If I try to push the conversation any further, then I might seem like she's trying to gain pity from me. But what you said about Mana is really surprising to hear. I know you feel a similar way. She embodies so many values that I wish I had. The person behind her must be an amazing person. Makro doesn't say anything. She continues to keep her eyes focused on her manga, not slowing her pace. Are you Natsuki and Yuri combined? Which wouldn't be a bad thing. But just the thought of it is just... Mm. The Tsun and the Knife Lover. Bing and one body. Ah, yeah. Your ski. Or... Mm. Naturi. Naturi. Why does this... Also, why does your ship also sound weird? Naturi! Sounds like a... Like an Italian saying something... Say, nature, but it ends with an I. Ah, ha. Oh, you have so good Naturi. <laughs> I don't know what this was. I'm, so, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If somebody feels offended or anything. <clears throat> anyway, 